ad hoc brew day. I need to make my mind up where I'm taking this pretty quickly because water is nearly up to water level. Um, so I need to get my water additions in there. Just basic reversed osmosis from that little thing down there. I take it up to um, 48, but I'll start mixing in my water additions here. Not sure where to go with this, really. Um, I have to give the plate chiller. Oh yes, yeah, someone asked me about this. These, the, all this is are, um, these are cam locks, but I've put caps on them just to stop any crap getting into the plate chiller. I'm not bothered about the water cycle there. That's all right, but I don't want any shit getting into the plate chiller itself. So these are literally just caps and bungs that I've put on here. Uh, and then obviously belt and braces. Cover it with a tea towel anyway because that's that's what i'm like too many years working in teaching aseptic practice and stuff like that but i must get away from health issues because that's the reason i'm doing this ad hoc brew i've had enough of public health england bollocks this week and scientists fighting with mps fighting with the you know um leisure and brewing and restaurant industries and stuff and it would be nice, wouldn't it, Delilah, if people could actually learn to talk to each other properly and try and work out sensible ways forward. But, fucking hell, <laughs> who am I kidding? Right, so, go and check me water. Uh, this uh, might have a bit of a flickery screen because I'm doing it from computer. Now, this is the Beersmith water profile for uh, Hoppy Pale Ale, and it has got a massive amount of calcium of sulfate to chloride in fact four times so i don't know really mind you it's got yeah i don't know where i'm going to go with this now um if i match this with um a target profile of my nipa it should be under here somewhere it will say Martin's Nipah and then match with that target profile we'll see the difference there between and this is all about the um, um, chloride to sulfate ratio now I'm still obviously getting used to this had I the time I would have gone and reread uh, Palmer's book on water or the section on Palmer's book on water but as this is an odd ad hoc brew I don't know fucking hell do you know what? I'm going to go with a Nipah water profile. Fuck it. That is my standard kind of like water profile. <clears throat> oh, bollocks. Decisions, decisions. I don't really care. It's doing it that matters, isn't it? Right, I'm going to go with this water profile. Fuck it. Here's one of those things that seemed like a really good idea at the time. Something to, um, to store the tri-clamps on. Then of course you do that and you spend the whole fucking day wanting to get them lined up perfectly until you go slowly insane and say fuck the OCD. They can all stay out of line. Right, we're going with my standard um, New England IPA water profile. Fuck it, ain't gonna hurt too much, is it? Um, and we're nearly up to, nearly up to level. Uh, get those water additions in now. All right, water's in mashed on. I'm gonna get it at 74. Um, and now I'm gonna weigh out just some Maris Otter. I'm gonna do six kilograms of Maris Otter. My least favorite bit. Everything gets covered in dust. Right, uh, my strike temperature, I don't know what I said anyway, but I'm gonna set it at 72, because um, then it'll drop really quickly to about 60. 665 right let's get that in there so about 15 minutes later because <laughs> there's no prizes for rushing when it comes to doing in apparently and what is the rush this is my escape for today my one day of escape from 
Zoom and mailing lists and phone calls from idiots. God, I hope none of them ever watch this. Right, so we're going to give that an hour at 65. <sighs> Back soon ish. Well, in an hour or probably somewhere like that. Tested the pH 5.4. That's all right. Fuck it, I can live with that. I think after a lot of buggering about and experimentation, I've managed to nail the PID settings so that they maintain exactly, well, within 0.1 degree, the setting uh, by using the Herms. So that's good. Um, right, we've got, whoa, oh, that's 25 minutes of the mash left yet. And then this is my little Heath Robinson filter to go from the mash tun to the boiler. And all it is essentially, I don't know how well that filmed, in there is one of these little hop spiders. So what I got was a, I got, I got one that I can show, sort of probably. I got a, a tri-clamp fitting and just tapped a half inch BSP thread into there. So that then goes on there and then that screws into that and it was purely to make it a little bit shorter in the fullness of time i'm going to have a separate system with a filter and a sight glass so i can see what's going in there and the only i know it's not massively important but it was for me it was a handy uh way of just stopping even more crap going in there i'm going to try something else fairly different today if i can get my head around it and i don't know yet whether it will work which is about recirculating from here into you can't see it uh into the um this thing so you get the wart recirculating through the hop spider and it should in, infuse more more hoppy hoppy matter into the wart which is something I've been thinking about for a while because all the water on the outside isn't really getting too infused. You're half hoping that those oils will dissipate out. So we'll see how that goes. Right, so back when we're ready to do the transfer, I suppose. Uh, I've got my iodine ready to do the, uh, the, the check just to see how efficient it has been. Um, yeah, back soon. Oh, that seemed to go quite quickly for you anyway. So at 53, 63.3. That's all right. That's okay. I can live with that. Um, let's have a, have a quick butcher's up. Hmm, looks all right. So next, I'm going to run it around a little bit. I turn the HLT off. Um, sorry, I said, what did I say? I'm going to run it around a bit. I'm not going to run it around a bit. I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, come from here out of here through this into the kettle and then I'm going to come from the hot liquor tank out into the herms to flush all this out and then start the sparge yeah that's quite reassuring good so we've got got a reasonable conversion we're now transferring purely under gravity siphon thing, you know, without the pump on uh, into here. So that's gradually going through. When that drops significantly, I'll put my little sparge ball on and we'll start our sparge at 78. All right, the hops are weighed out. I, um, I got for something slightly different. Well, I haven't, I've gone for what I said I was gonna go for, but I'm gonna do 30 grams of mosaic to start. I know it seems a bit strange using a heavily aromatic hop just for bittering, but I got lots of it and oh, fuck it, you know, so what? Won't get any uh, real aroma or flavor from it. That's purely gonna be bittering. So it's 30 grams of that to start. Then 10 grams of Simcoe, Amarillo and mosaic are gonna go in at 10 minutes before the end. Um, and then 30 grams of Simcoe, Amarillo and Mosaic are going to go in at flame out and I'll leave that in there for about half hour 
let the temperature drop a little bit first, I think. Um, then I'm also going to dry hop after fermentation has finished. I'll dry hop 30 grams of Simcoe, Amarillo and Mosaic again, uh, just for a couple of days before cold crashing. Right, so that's the hops ready. Uh, let's see how the transfer is going on. Oh, we've got a good transfer going. Now it's uh, probably a good time to start the sparge and this is the bit that I always like. This is where we take water from the HLT through the Herms coal which cleans all that out. You'll see it clearing in the sight glass and then through the um, spray ball. So let's keep an eye on the sight glass, turn the pump on. I love that, the alchemy. And we've got a sparge going. Might have a bit of a more encouraging sparge, I think. Let's try a bit more like that. Good. There's no prizes for having a shower, but that should do reasonably well. Transfer done. All that's about to be scooped out. I shall then refill the HLT with water for cleaning down. When that comes up to the boil, we'll put the hop spider in and the first lot of hops. We have the start of a boil on the outside of the hop filter, not necessarily on the inside. So we're going to wait for that hop break and all that gunky shit whatever to um, leave itself on the side of the kettle and then I'll bung some ops in and start the timer. I think this is going to be one of the, the things with such a large hop filter. It will take a while for the heat to actually get into the wart in the middle but it will get there. Right, so outside of the hop spider, it's boiling and overflowing into the hop spider. <laughs> oh, fuck. You know what the lesson is here, don't you? Don't put the hop spider in until it's all properly boiling. Right, we've got the hops in. This is a little idea I saw someone post about in one of the brewing groups which is to take the wort from bottom through the pump it's actually going through a filter doesn't really need to but you know back up through the pump I've joined two um, camera rocks together and then into here and then recirculate as I think I explained before. So let's see. Oh, you fucking idiot. I don't believe I've done that. I've forgotten to put a fucking hose on the bottom again. I'm not convinced my mind's totally on this, you know. Uh, what was I saying? Right, before I... I can edit that out, can't I? It'd be all right. No one will fucking know. Uh, someone said to me a little while ago, what's, what's the most important thing you've bought for your brewery was it the plate chiller or was it the you know whatever no it's the fucking mop right anyway what we're going to do is we're going to transfer in a big loop back into here um, even though it's sort of like boiling nicely on the middle it's only because it's overflowing so we're going to start around transfer A minute. Yeah, just starting to I need to get the air out, but that will now circulate nicely. So I keep that circulating, and the idea is that it pushes the watt out through the. At the moment, it's overflowing into it, but it push it out through. You know what I mean? To get a decent hop infusion, right? 
Let's see what I can fuck up next. Well, it's not quite as uh, as good as I'd hoped. I've had to take that out because it's just not. It's all gunked up. It's not filtering at all. It is containing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop the boil for a minute and uh, stop the clock and everything. And I'm going to have to chuck that into another bucket and then throw it back in the top and use the smaller hop filter while I clean all that fucker out. It's fucking raining. Thank you. Bright sunshine and rain. Lovely. Ah. And we had a power surge which has blown the battery charger on the big boat. Brilliant. That's what we love. Sunday, eh? Right, let's get that back in there. Well, we took that one out and I've hosed it all down. Why the fuck I've put it on? I just walked straight past it, you silly sod. And um, it is just, I don't know whether the mesh is too fine or I'm not sure. I'm going to whack it in the dishwasher and give it a good, give it a good clean, but I don't know. Wasn't, uh, wasn't what I was expecting. It was basically just a vessel within a vessel. Whereas this seems to be slightly larger mesh. Well, see, it's almost time for the 10 minute hop edition. Let's see if that one gets bunged up. Ten minute hop edition, ten grams of each. Now I'm going to set the recirculation thing going again. Well, that's flame out. I'm still not completely sure about whether or not all of that wort did get boiled. So, put final hop editions in anyway. So this is thirty each of Simcoe Amarillo and Mosaic. And I think I'll start the uh, start the circulation going again. Just to pull every last bit of flavour out of those. bad flow that means that filter hasn't got terribly blocked I know I'm throttling it back on the uh, on the pump a little bit but that's good ready almost I think now I'm just going to take that straight through the plate chiller into the uh, stainless steel conical fermenter which is currently soaking in star sand all right, see how we go with this. It's a bit hot, really, for that. The, the, the last hop addition really ideally would go in at about 85, but you know what? <sighs> Fuck it. Today's, today's been a strange old day, what with a battery charger blowing. 800 quid they are. We'll have to see if we can get that fucking mended. Jesus. Right. So anyway, this worked. The little filter between the mash tun and the boiler. That was fine. Need to shovel this out in a minute. Give that 30 minutes. Pop it in the fermenter, pitch the yeast. Uh, and then uh, go for a little lay down. No, I don't know, probably have a beer. How about that? Now the recirculation is doing the same in here that it was doing in the, uh, in the larger one. But if we turn the pump off, you will observe that all it is doing is slowing it down and it is actually still draining through which is a good thing <laughs> I'll give it a little bit of a stir anyway and the thing about this is yeah okay and by stirring it I'm going to be forcing small particles of hops out 
through the mesh, but they're going to be so small, they're not going to join up again and cause big, great big clumps of hop. So yeah, not bad. Uh, gonna have to rethink this, I think, sometimes, but it's still okay. Uh, I'm all right with that. We've overcome it today. That was a bit of a bastard when that just filled up and wouldn't drain at all. Uh, I had to hoist it out with um, block and tackle because <laughs> it were heavy and I wasn't standing on a chair. So good, almost ready for the money shot into the fermenter. Well, the power surge we had earlier not only blew the charger in there, which I'm hoping to fuck can be fixed because they're 800 quid. It's also taken out two of my Inkbird Wi-Fi controllers. Now that's, well, I mean that's shit because they're about 50 fucking quid or something, but at least I haven't got four brews on the go in fermentation fridges at the moment. So this one I'm going to put in fridge number four and then borrow an ink bird from upstairs, uh, which just means I'll just have to leave a fridge on, sort of on, on, rather than temperature controlled on, which is all right. That's okay. <sighs> but expensive old day. Never mind. We're going to start the... Um, plate chiller chilling and uh, first off as soon as it starts trickling through here it will have pretty much um, I, mean, I have flushed that out but I like to just stick some warm stuff through it as well let's give it a little oops Right, so we've got some going through there at 20 lots, 40, that's going to shoot right up. Right, so that's warm to that. I'll now start the water, cold water flowing through it. That is throttled a little bit more, I think. There you go. Uh, so that should now drop really quite quickly. Good. It a little bit more and we'll be at pitching temp in no time <sighs> right well the strange thing is and I won't really know until I start editing all of these little clips um, together is, is you start the day one way you know by filling up the HLT with <sighs> reverse osmosis water and then figuring out what water profile to use and what hops to use and you're halfway through and then boom you know suddenly you've got probably about one and a half grams worth of fucking damage as a result of an electrical surge those sort of things shouldn't happen these days <sighs> industrial unit you see three phase electric only takes one phase or even if you had all three phases running uh, something you know for one phase to be slightly out of sync and bang you've got big trouble how's that doing 19.7 that's good so yeah another day another disaster but let's see how this turns out hopefully it won't be a complete fuck up right we'll get that in there we'll swap some ink birds around uh, we'll pitch the yeast and then I'm gonna go and get pissed well what with one thing and another I didn't think I was going to get this far at one point today. Um, the brew, yeah, it's okay, it's gone all right. Um, but apart from the odd little things that you know are destined to fuck you up every time, um, like the hop filter and then the power surge. Now the power surge was interesting because it's taken out two ink birds. It's blown the 800 amp battery charger. We think it had an effect on the inverter on Mustn't Grumble there. Um, there's two uh, Wemo remote controls and the air conditioning 
upstairs is now saying, well it's blinking three times, which says internal motor error. So it looks like it's blown the motor in the aircon, which is really weird. And it's a lot of collateral damage, so I'm going to have to get on to Eon tomorrow and say, look guys, what the fuck's going on? Anyway, ye yeast is pitched. We're in the uh, we're in the fermentation fridge. We'll be in there for 14 days. We'll dry hop it. <sighs> yeah. So currently cleaning down caustic soda in the boil kettle. This lot, I'm not going to bother drying it out. I'm going to chuck it straight in for the fishes. Uh, then clean the uh, clean the mash tun out. Uh, oh, do you know I've really earned this drink tonight. I think I'm going to have. I'm going to have a night on the Raz. Sunday night on Raz. And then be rude to someone in a Zoom meeting tomorrow. <laughs> I do that anyway. Oh well, uh, that's been a slightly different uh, video for you boys and girls. I hope it's been better than cash in, the, uh, cash in the country and homes under the attic and all that bollocks and whatever. <sighs> and I hope you had a good weekend. If you enjoy this absolute time-wasting nonsense please feel free to subscribe to the channel until next time stay safe I fucking deserve this today. Bohemian Pilsner, clearing nicely. There's no finings, no gelatin, nothing in there. It's just sitting in the keg, gently doing its thing. Oh God, do I deserve this. What a fucking day. <sighs> oh. I think that's one of the best pilgrim lagers I've ever made. Either that, or it's just because I really fucking deserve it. Right, that's it anyway. This can go in the after, after the final thing. The outtake. With a few fucks and a few bollocks. Very expensive day I think today. I hope I can claim some of that off the, uh, off the national grid. Right, that's it.